Okay, so uh, what we have here is a list of, of readings, uh, volume measurements that you all made on the same 250 milliliter beaker, the same 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, and the same 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. Now, here's my question for you. Let's, let's look at the beaker first of all. My question is, how much water is in that beaker? Somebody answer. Raise your hand. How much water is in it? Martin? Somewhere around 120. Okay, somewhere around 120. Any other answers? Taylor. Um, somewhere around 120 with like a variable of 10, maybe. Cause... Okay, a variable of 10. What do you mean by a variable with a variable of 10? So plus or minus 10. Okay, plus or minus 10. So that would mean, so if you said 120 plus or minus 10, that would mean as low as 110, as high as 130. Is that what you mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to? <laughs> Take a shot at it. Ken, you look like you want to say something. Okay, so so what you would be saying, you said it's clearly below the 125, so you wouldn't want to say 120 plus or minus 10, because that would mean it could have been above that line. Right? Okay. All right, so you want to say plus or minus something else. But I think... The important thing in here is that um, some of you have picked up on this, the plus or minus idea, right? And uh, which maybe did you, you think, thought of that because of the video? Yeah. Is that where? Yeah, yeah good. So because normally, I, I say that because normally my classes don't pick up on that at this point, uh, using plus or minus. So that's right. That's what we want to do. What I, what I wanted to see is whether some of you would try to say, oh, it's 118. Right? Or, of course, there's always some people just jokingly pick their volume, you know, and say that's the correct one. Here's my next question. Is there a definite amount of water in that beaker? Yes. Yeah. In other words, is there a correct answer? Yes. An exact volume that is that exists in the world? And the answer is yes. Okay? So we're about to get into this whole kind of nebulous uncertainty of measurement idea, but I don't want you to lose sight of the fact, or I don't want you to interpret me as saying that there is not a definite volume in there, because there is, all right? And if you were an omniscient being, you could presumably give me that exact measurement to 100 decimal places, or however many you'd have to go to make it exact. You follow me? Now, I like the fact that somebody mentioned that it was definitely below the line as well, because these, all of these instruments have lines on them, right? And so the lines represent a kind of certain value, because you can tell whether something is above or below a line, as long as it's not very close, because if it's very close to the line, then maybe you can't tell exactly if it's above or below, right? But if it's clearly in between the lines, then you can say it's definitely less than this, it's definitely more than this. So there's some things we can know for certain. Let's look at the next one, the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. How much is in that one? Let me ask you this. Do you think it would be a good idea to, um, I mean, we, we've, we know, I think, we get the feeling for what we're trying to do now. We're trying to throw out a number and then say plus or minus, right? Wouldn't it make sense maybe to start by calculating an average? No? Well, let's pull out outliers first. Oh, okay, like pull out outliers first. One, it's clearly not 140 or 135, so those can be pulled out. Like the ones that's obviously on the line. Okay, and so so maybe before taking the average, we want to... Um, we want to pull some out. So, for example, uh, maybe the first two. Would you want to pull the first two out? Would we? Do you think we'd be justified in pulling any others out other than the first two? Okay. Why is that? Okay. Um, I don't know. The the only thing with that is that we have this. We have one here, one here, one here, one here. We have four. 
that are that. Actually, we have five because there's another one right here, right? I don't know. That's almost like, I mean, five is approaching almost a quarter of our, of our data, right? But I think, I think we might be justified in taking those two out. They are, they are like 10 or 15 points above, milliliters above the kind of average here. How about in the 100 milliliter cylinder? Do we have any real outliers there? Any clear outliers? <laughs> yeah, this one's this one's a little tougher because the 73 does look low. However, you know it's not too far from the 75, so I don't know. I mean, you could now. What I'm going to allow you to do on, say, a lab report is use your judgment for that, right? What you want to avoid doing is throwing things out as outliers simply because you don't like them, right? For example, it doesn't fit your hypothesis, so you throw the outlier out. That's what you don't want to do, okay? But if you make the outlier decision based on something else, like I'm going to apply some standard, like maybe it's two standard deviations away from the mean or something like that, then you, can, you could use that, all right? Just don't make the decision based on your, some preconceived notion about what you thought it was supposed to be, and this is not agreeing, so I'm going to toss it. Now, in the next one, what do you think with the 10 milliliter cylinder? What do we got? Any outliers there? No. No, no I would say, I would agree. It's, everything's pretty tight on that one, right? So this, it's hard to say. Now, what I want to do, though, because we're going to do some, some calculations here, I want to get the average on each of these. Um, any volunteers to calculate the average on these things? Who's got a calculator? Who's quick with the draw on the calculator? Okay. This one? 77.81. Okay, great. That was much faster than I expected. Anybody else? Uh, anybody want to do the 120? I mean, the yeah, the 120 for us? How about the 10? Anybody working on the 10? Okay. It wouldn't hurt to have more than one person do it so we have a check. <clears throat> yep, you guys did pretty good. With the exception of those couple of outliers on the, the 250, you were pretty close to each other. You know, one, one obvious source of potential error here that um, we didn't eliminate at the beginning was making sure we're all reading the lines the same, right? So in other words, realizing that on the beaker, the lines are 25 mils apart. If you misinterpreted that, then you're going to get a, a major error. That would be, we, we would call that a systematic error, right? You actually use the wrong numbers on this thing. So that would be called systematic error. And that's probably where the 135 and 140 came from. For example, you might have noticed on this beaker that on the left, the numbers go down from the top. I mean, go. They increase as you go down. On the right, they increase as you go up. So if you were reading the wrong side, for example, you would have gotten a, a very wrong number. OK, got any any averages here? Joe, you got one? <laughs> Jesse, you got one? Oh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, that's what do you Okay, that's more like it. <laughs> okay, good. Anybody do the, the beaker? Beaker? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We we should have coordinated better. Now is that without those two outliers without the one thirty five one forty? Right. Okay, good. So <clears throat> These are our averages, right? These are the means. 
And there's two ways to get our plus or minus notation, all right? Now, what we did it just a minute ago is you guys just kind of did it by eye, and you said if we take this plus or minus, we'll encompass the data, right? But there's two ways to, to get our plus or minus value. Um, and by the way, this, this plus or minus notation, we're going to call our uncertainty in measurement. Uncertainty in measurement. And there's two ways that we can get it from this data, all right? So we can use what's called the maximum deviation from the mean. There's actually more than two ways, but I'm going to show you two ways. The maximum deviation, or we can use the average deviation. There's a third that's actually much more commonly used called the standard deviation but I'm not going to show that to you because uh, calculations are complicated and I don't want you just punching a button on your calculator without knowing what's happening. It's like a giant spider over here. No. Okay, so... <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so maximum deviation. Here's what you do to get the maximum deviation. So let's, uh, let's first look at how we would get the maximum deviation from the mean. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the absolute difference between each of these numbers and my average, All right? And then I'm going to take the maximum value of those. So I would take 112.5 minus 118.17. I'm going to do that for each one of these. And you might see right away how a spreadsheet could be helpful here if I've got a lot of data. Okay. In each case, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the absolute value of this difference. So in this case, I've got 112.5 minus 118.7. What is it? 5.67. What is it? 5.67. Now, this right here, this number right here, then, is called the deviation of that value, that data point, from the mean, right? Now, what I'm going to do for the maximum deviation method of my uncertainty is I'm going to find the maximum deviation from the mean, and I'm going to use that as my plus or minus value. Now, rather than go down and do all these subtractions, all we have to do is do it for the highest and the lowest data points, right? So what's my highest data point? 123, 125, 127 and a half. So let's do this one. Absolute value. And then where's my lowest one? 112? Yeah, I'd say 112. Okay, so let's do those two. Which one's the greatest? 127 and a half. This one is 9.33. This one is 6.17. So here's what I would write then. That's my maximum deviation. So what I'm going to write is 118.17 plus or minus 9.33 milliliters. Now that's pretty close, actually. That's very close to what somebody said. I think maybe Taylor is getting 120 plus or minus 10. Very close to that. So maybe that's. <laughs> That's not so bad of a way to, uh, to express this data. Now, it's true. It does throw it over that line. And, you know, if you want it, you don't have to make it symmetrical. You know, you could say plus this or minus this. It's just not usually done that way. So this is how we would report. This is a very reasonable way to report the volume in that container. Except that, except for one thing. I'm going to change this a little bit. So instead of writing... 118.17 plus or minus 9.33. I'm going to write 118 plus or minus 9. Why would I do that? Why would I drop the decimal places? Mark? Because a plus or minus is already an estimate, so 7.33 is an estimate. Right. 
Yeah, and it, it holds for both of these. If I'm unsure within nine millimeters, in other words, I'm, I'm saying I could be nine milliliters off, then why should I write anything in the tenths and hundredths place here? Basically, what I'm telling you is I'm not even sure about this one. So I know nothing about these. Zero. I know absolutely nothing about the tenths place and the hundredths place. I'm uncertain about the ones place. Okay? So that's what you do. And as a basic rule, what you do is you have only one non-zero digit. This is just the general rule for kind of cleaning up at the end, cleaning up your number. One non-zero digit in the uncertainty. All right, that's the first rule. And then the num the same number of decimal places. In the uncertainty and the measurement itself. So in other words, what I do is first I drop the 0.33 because I want only one non-zero digit in the uncertainty, and then I shave off the two decimal places here because I want them to match in terms of number of decimal places. So I end up with 118 plus or minus 9. Now here's a question before we, we're going to just do the other two in the same way, but before we do that, why is it that we had that 9 milliliters up or down range. It just had this play in our numbers. Where does that come from? Like, I mean, we already agreed that there is a definite amount of water in there. Thomas? Well, the variables, like, the table couldn't be quite even. Um, person could have, could have been quite level with the beaker or the graduated cylinder when they were measuring it, so that could throw off, you know, how you perceive things mm -hmm. and where the water is. Okay, good. So there's something called parallax, right? If you, you move yourself relative to two objects at different distances, and they'll look different to each other in terms of vertical placement, right? If you go, so it is important when you're reading a cylinder to make sure you're on level with the water, right? What else, Martin? People hold it in their hand. If you held That's it in your hand, if you held it in your hand, you could tip it one way or the other, backward or forward, which could change it. How about reading the meniscus, right? You've got this, you've got this kind of a thing right here in a graduated cylinder, and the meniscus kind of looks like this. It's got like two lines. It's got an upper surface and a lower surface. You're reading the lower surface of the meniscus. If you were reading the upper surface, or if you were reading where it meets the cylinder on the side, then you're going to get a high reading. And actually, that encompasses probably half a mil right there. Right, so you could be half a mil off getting attacked by that spider. So those are, those are important, right? But what I want to emphasize is another kind of fundamental um, difference here. And that is that if you have two lines on the, if you have lines on the graduated cylinder, if your meniscus is between the lines, then you have to estimate the volume between the lines. So like on this thing here, the lines are one milliliter away. So let's say this is, let's say this is the 70 line then I might say this is 72.5, right? This is 71, this is 72, this is 73. I know where the lines are, I can see them, right? I can tell if I'm above or below the line, but between the lines, that's an estimate. Me saying that's 0.5, somebody else might say, oh, I think that's 0.4. There, in other words, it's a judgment call. There's always, in every single measurement, there is always a judgment element when you're estimating between the lines. And so 
And that is a big source of uncertainty because that different people might look at it different ways, right? Some people might tend to want to lock on to 0.5, like a nice halfway point. Other people might be trying to be a little more precise. Some people might tend to underestimate, some to overestimate. Who knows? So that brings in what we call random error. Now let's look quickly at this next one here. Uh, what do we got for plus or minus on this? Where's our high value? 79 and a half? Yeah. And 73 is the low? Yeah. So what's our deviation here, our maximum deviation? Point six nine. I think the this one's four point eight one. Okay, so this is going to be this one's going to be seventy eight plus or minus five milliliters. Now that is definitely much. That's a much larger uncertainty than we should be getting on this instrument because actually five milliliters is five lines. So we should not be off by five lines on this thing. We should be within a milliliter or so as we're going around, which makes me think that like something like this was probably an error in reading the lines. You were counting wrong or something like that. Okay. We probably, we probably would. In fact, I would say in a case like this, you know that there's issues with these numbers as well because you know where those lines are. So some, somebody must have misread the scale. See what I'm saying? Actually misread the scale. So we could do that, but we're not going to take the time to now. Now on this next one, we got 6.9 plus or minus, we're going to have to go up 0.2 for the 7.1, right? And down 0.2 for the 6.7. So I think that's it. So 2, 0.2. 6.9 plus or minus 0.2 milliliters. Now, here's a question. Let's say you have to measure out some powerful medicine for somebody. Which device are you going to use? Martin. Right, the smallest one. Now, um, in terms of accuracy, and we'll get to this later, we don't really know which one is most accurate in terms of which one reads true. For example, maybe they made the cylinder wrong and they shifted all the lines up one milliliter. We wouldn't know that. What we do know is that it's much more precise. It's much more repeatable. You can get, I mean, you guys almost all read the same volume pretty much within 0.1 or 0.2. Whereas when you look at this thing, you were all over the board, right? So I would not want to use this. This is not precise. This, however, is very precise. So that's the maximum deviation method. You just find the greatest deviation from the mean. What I have on the, uh, on the website, there is a document called uncertainty. And if you click on that, it kind of runs through another example for you with another set of data. It shows you how to do the, the calculation for the deviation. Average deviation is just the average of all the deviations, okay? So the average deviation is the average of all the deviations. So instead of just picking the largest difference between the data points and the mean, I would actually have to go down through, and I'm not going to take the time to do this now, I would have to go down through and calculate every single deviation and then find the average. What might be the advantage to doing that? More accurate. What's that? Well, remember, we're talking about the deviations now. What would be the advantage of finding the average instead of using the maximum? As my Now, this is what we would put right here. So in other words, instead of putting 9 right here, which is the maximum difference between the mean and the data points, I would be putting an average right there, which would be lower. Yes, that would be a smaller deviation. Okay, what's the advantage of that? Well, what would be the advantage? 
advantage of using a smaller deviation. What do you mean by more accurate? It's smaller, so you know it's between the two numbers that are an S bar bar. So you have a better guess. Well, that's true, but if we had a choice, like it really depends on your purposes. Let me give you an example. If you're an engineer and you're designing airplanes and these numbers are the amount of stress on the wings that the plane will experience when it's flying through the air, would you want to use a larger deviation, like the maximum deviation, or the smaller, the average, Martin? You'd want to use the larger one because you want worst case scenario, right? So it depends on your purpose. If, however, what you want is a more realistic case where you're more interested in the economics of a situation, right? Maybe you're making a product that's not where lives don't depend on it, and you're more interested in conserving your ingredients, for example, or your steel or something like that, then you might use an average because it's going to be more realistic. Using the average is going to eliminate more of these kind of more extreme numbers, like the 127 and a half, for example. That's true. It doesn't, you're right. It doesn't, it eliminates them from the range at the end. Because when I, so in other words, if I had an average here, and maybe that was plus or minus five, right? Then my range would not include those extreme values. It's kind of like saying, I think that probably some of you measured wrong. And I'm going to use a deviation that is based on the majority of your measurements. That would be the average deviation. So let's see. What I'll do on lab reports, because you're going to be doing this with your data on lab reports, is I'm actually going to leave it up to you what, which deviation you would rather use. As a class or as a group? As a group, yeah. As a group, you'll be able to decide whether you want to use maximum or average. Obviously, average is more calculations, but you're not going to have 20 data points either, typically. You know, you might be, have three replications or four or five. And so it's not hard to do an average in that case. OK. Any questions? Tomorrow, I'll go through a couple of more examples of, of doing these, these uh, calculations, and uh, we'll, you'll try your hand at, at some of your own, okay? I don't have any homework for you, unfortunately.